So originally I had a hernia and I went to my surgeon to schedule a hernia operation. It was on my left side, but I complained to my um, I complained to my surgeon that I was having pain on the opposite side. So he suggested that I take another CT just to be sure that they didn't they didn't miss anything. So, Mark, I went in to the radiologist, took a CT. I went to my GP. He said, we have your report. And unfortunately, we found a golf size ball mass on your bladder, which wasn't so good news. And I immediately asked him, was this a serious situation? And he looked very grim and he said, very, very serious. They had not taken a biopsy, but by the looks of this mass golf size uh, tumor on my bladder, they were very suspicious and very concerned. Um, so I went back and told my wife we had prayer. And um, I even texted you, if you remember, you were in Europe and asked you to pray. But uh, a night later, Mark, I had a dream. And in the dream, I found myself in a Zoom meeting with you. It was your Zoom meeting. And you had all of your intercessors and partners praying on that Zoom meeting in my dream. And when I was on the Zoom, you called me out and you said, Brother Anthony, we're going to pray tonight, or rather in the Zoom meeting, that your tumor will be benign. And uh, and then I heard all the sounds of like hundreds of people praying on the Zoom and you were praying and the dream ended. I woke up, it was 5 a.m. in the morning. And I thought to myself, that was so real. And I felt the anointing of the Holy Spirit all over my bedroom and all over my body. I decided, Mark, that I would look on my phone to see if you were on Zoom, just, you know, just a chance. I clicked my, my phone. I looked at your website. You were in England and you were on a live Zoom. I quickly threw on a shirt. I combed my hair. I pushed the button. This is now about 5.15 a.m. And there I was live on Zoom. My window came up and immediately Mark uh, looked at me and he said, Brother Anthony, you are on a prophetic assignment. We're going to pray for you and for your tumor to be benign. And just like my dream, everyone started praying. A hundred odd intercessors you prayed, Joe prayed, everybody prayed. I felt the anointing of the Holy Spirit, and I knew right at that moment the Lord touched my tumor. I just knew it. I went back to my urologist. He wanted to take some deeper tests, many more tests, um, a, uh, uh, a radio, uh, uh, different types of tests, and so five of them, in fact. And so I did all that. And I, I, I was leaving the radiologist, and the radiologist called me back in. I was on my way home. And the lady said, you need to come back. We've had a problem. We need to have another test. So I came back to the radiologist and uh, took another CT and another scan on my stomach. And uh, the radiologist came to me and says, Mr. Castro, something unusual has happened to your bladder. We cannot find the tumor. In fact... Your mass has been deflated like a balloon and it's hanging down like just a deflated balloon. We've never seen anything like it. The wonderful news is that it is benign. You do not have cancer and God zapped that tumor and I am healed to the glory of God. And I can't stop praising him, Mark, because Jesus Christ healed me. It was a miracle. And if he did it for me, he will do it for anyone that puts faith in him. And I am shouting that Jesus is a healer. And by his stripes, you are healed. Believe him. Take him at his word. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. And I believe Jesus is going to touch you powerfully today. Put your trust in him. Hallelujah. <laughs> so, Anthony, um, I have two questions. Who healed you, Anthony? Jesus Christ, Mark. Okay. The second one is, Anthony, you're a pastor. You are a pastor. How could a pastor get cancer? Is it possible for good people to get sick? 
Well, to be honest with you, that is a bit of a mystery. Um, I had had pain in my side for a number of years, and I asked the Lord to show me what it was. I do not know how I got it, but I do know it was the work of the devil, and the Lord exposed it, and the Lord honored our faith. And I didn't ask for healing, Mark. I asked for a miracle because I didn't have time to be going to the doctors. So I believe God not only heals, but he answers very quickly. So, Anthony, you can be the friend of God. You can be a good person. You can be a pastor and you can get sick. One of the problems of being in this world, in this world, Jesus said, you will have tribulation. But be of good cheer, I've overcome the world. There's healing in Jesus' name, whether you're good or bad. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Mark. Praise God. I'm, I'm excited. Look, we're just going to thank you very much. I've got another question for you, Anthony. Uh, the second question is, someone here has probably got cancer. They want to know what they should do. What is your advice? Mark, I would tell them three things, maybe four things. Number one, we must take God at his word. He is not a man that he should lie. He watches over his word to perform it. Take God literally out, uh, uh, take him literally uh, uh, from his word. The other thing I want to say that God means what he says and he says what he means. If we will believe, we will also receive. Also, I would say that Jesus paid a very, very difficult price, and that was stripes on his back, and that really hurt, and that is your proof, and that is your receipt that it was paid for already. He's not going to pay for it now. He has already paid for your healing. Believe that on the cross, he took your cancer. Believe on the cross, he took your sickness and your pain. He had you on his mind when he hung on that cross and he took your cancer. He took your pain. So when he took it, that simply means he also removed it through his stripes. Believe that. Lastly, I want to say this, and that is this. He heals you because he loves you. Amen. Thank you, Anthony. God bless you. Praise God. Oh, I will.